everybody! Today I'm going to be doing a book haul and I'm so excited for this one because it also has to do with some story times because I recently went to Barnes & Noble like yesterday and that's where a couple of these books came from and a lot of stuff went down at Barnes & Noble that usually does not go down at Barnes & Noble because Barnes & Noble is usually a pretty chill place but yesterday it was anything but chill. Ooh. So I'm gonna be doing a little story time throughout this video, so with that being said, let's get into this book haul. Okay, so the first book is the pre Utopia Book Club book for the month of May, and I am so excited about it, and I'm already loving this book so much. I'm only a few pages in, but it's already so freaking good, and I do not expect anything less from Rick Riordan, and that is Trials of Apollo, The Dark Prophecy, and we are partnered with Disney Hyperion to bring you guys this book for the book club, and I'm so excited because we got to do this for the book club last year for the first book, and it was so, so Oh, good. I actually laughed out loud during reading this book series because it's just that funny and I really appreciate Rick Riordan for being that clever as an author. So this book, well I'm not gonna tell you what this one's about just in case you have not read the first one, but the first one, The Hidden Oracle, is about the god Apollo pretty much being sentenced to earth as a mortal by his father Zeus because he did not do something that Zeus liked. So pretty much it's about him navigating the world from his mortal form and trying to earn back his father's respect. There's lots of stuff that goes on in the novel, like lots of crazy emperors that are coming back from the past to go destroy Apollo and his weekend form and lots of other crazy stuff. So it's such a good book series and I cannot wait to finish the second one. The next book is, of course, A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. How could I have not gotten this book this month? Because it just came out. I am a little bit more than halfway through it. It's so phenomenal. I listened to a majority of it on Audible because I was driving from Texas to Chicago to help my family move house. I decided to listen to this audiobook and it was so good and I am 400... 50 pages into it? I think something like that. And it is just so, so good. Definitely steamy. Definitely crazy. Definitely magical. And lots of lots of just angstiness. I love it so much. Now we're gonna get into my little segment I'm gonna call Barnes & Noble Adventures with Sasha. If you follow me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is at Sasha Allsberg, shameless plug. You were probably following along with my adventures live because I was live tweeting about what the heck was going on. It was pretty interesting, very crazy, and something that usually does not happen in Barnes & Noble. Okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna first share the story time, then go into the book in this book haul that I'm gonna be sharing with you that I got yesterday. So, let's get into it. I walk into Barnes & Noble and First of all, I see this cute guy at the desk. I don't I pay attention to him, but I'm like, okay, I probably will get my books checked out later on so I can have my eye candy later. So I went up the escalator and I decided, okay, I want to go quickly edit a photo that I took the other day, so I post on Instagram, and then I'm gonna go browse because I wanted to get that photo editing done, I guess. So I just sit in the chair and I start just like, you know, doing the effects on my photo. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see one of the workers talking to this woman. And the woman was at the magazine stand. She was like tossing the magazines on the ground, just like toss, toss, toss. She was like looking at them, tossing it, like just blazingly on the ground. She picked up a book from behind her, she tossed it on the ground, but it wasn't like she was angry. It was more like she just felt like doing it. I, I It was very odd. She was an older lady, not too old. She probably was in her 50s, 60s, and she just didn't seem to have a lot of recollection as to what was going on in the moment. I don't know if she had some like mental issues or you know something was going on personally and she just was kind of like blocking out the world, but it was a little bit nerve-wracking just because I'm like, what's going on? Is she okay? Like, is the worker okay? Is everything okay? But I don't intervene because unless like I see that somebody's at risk, I will pretty much keep my distance. I wasn't really thinking much of it besides the worker asking the woman to stop throwing things on the ground. And the woman just didn't listen and she just like walked away. And then she came around the corner, I see her, and she just like kind of wheezed between the magazine stacks and she keeps on like tossing things on the ground. And then the worker comes up from behind her and she's like, okay ma'am, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave if you're gonna keep on doing that. It's not appropriate and don't make me call security. And I was like, wait, Barnes & Noble has security? Okay, cool. So she um, stopped throwing things on the ground and she just went over to one of the stacks at Barnes & Noble and just like kind of leaned against it and just waited there. I was like, okay, she probably just stopped and she's maybe waiting for somebody. The worker didn't call any security yet, so I think the woman was just waiting for somebody and she was, but I decided to go mind my own business. So I walked over to the stacks and I started looking through the books because I was like, let's see what just came out. Let's see if I want to get anything. And then I hear in the distance, like uh, about a shelf away, uh, the worker calling the non-emergency police line. And I was like, oh, oh, that's getting a little crazy. What's going on here? 
you what the police getting called and the uh, woman she was just like hanging out just like leaning against the stacks like she wasn't doing anything but I understand like this woman seemed to have been doing it for quite a while so she wasn't leaving either the Barnes Noble so I think that she wanted somebody to escort the lady out and the worker didn't feel confident in her skills of doing so so that's why she wanted to call like the security or non-emergency police I guess it was just like odd because that's never really happened before I'm kind of I was worried about the lady I was worried about the worker it just didn't seem like a comfortable situation for anybody at all all parties and then I later saw the lady being escorted out by what seemed to be her son so I hope that that was the case I hope that no charges were done nothing crazy happened I hope that it was just settled mutually but that's the first story time and let me show the book that I wandered over the stacks to go and read about and that was The Freemason's Daughter by Shelley Sackier this book is about a girl and she lives in Scotland with her father who's a mason and she and her clan go down to England because they are hired by a duke to form a garrison and pretty much the girl and her clan they are enemies of the English they do not like the English but throughout all this kind of like unsettlement she meets the Duke's son and they start to form a bond and a friendship and a relationship and they have to hide it from their fathers just because it is not seen in any good light whatsoever in their time there's also a covert plan being organized behind the scenes with the Scottish clan against the Duke and I just thought that this book sounded very interesting very curious and definitely something that was right up my alley England Scotland yes okay so second story isn't that you know crazy but it's just like funny because I didn't think much of it and you guys could probably relate to this okay so whenever I'm I'm walking to Barnes & Noble, I tend to just collect lots of books and then I go and organize them into piles of what I need to keep and what am I going to just like put back because I'm not going to buy 10 books. That's, that's a lot of money. So I uh, had about six books in my hands and they were pretty thick books so I was kind of like schlepping them along and I didn't notice it. I didn't think much of it but then I passed uh, some of the workers and they looked at me they looked at each other and the mill worker comes and approaches me and he's like, um, I think that you need a basket. And I was like, yeah. I do, thank you. I just thought it was funny because, you know, a lot of people, they just like refuse to have a basket. I don't know why. It's not like it's a defining factor of what you have to buy. It's just, hey, they're just trying to help you with a basket. So he gave me the basket and I'm like, yeah, I'm probably the reason that you guys are still in business. <laughs> and then I walk away. I'm like, why? Why do I say these things? Why? I, okay, cool. But one of the books that were in the pile that actually made the cut, because I had six books and I ended up buying three of them, was The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Grant. So I decided to pick this one up just because I was really into some historical fiction but also with some mystical elements as well. And this book, this is about the Duchess of Bedford and she is married to the Duke of Bedford and he teaches her all about alchemy. But then when he dies she ends up marrying his squire and then they get thrust into this world of the court and royalty and all this crazy stuff. I got this, I'm really excited, so yeah. Okay, and the final story, which I find so entertaining, and it's just so funny. So, uh, you remember when I was mentioning a little bit before how I saw this cute guy who worked at the little front desk at Barnes & Noble, and then I was like, okay, well, he's probably gonna help me check out the books, like, I'll see him later. I was making my way down after all this stuff that happened at Barnes & Noble, like, a few, like, an hour beforehand, and I see that the guy's still there, and I'm like, okay, cool. When I finally get a good look at his face, he looks like the spitting image of the main actor in 13 Reasons Why, Clay. It was crazy. I wish I got a picture. Like, he had a little bit thicker eyebrows than the guy in 13 Reasons Why, but guys, let me tell you, he looked just like him. The way his posture was, the way he dressed, the way his haircut was, his jaw, his facial structure, everything looked like Clay. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to tell him. I just have to. He's like, oh, how are you? I'm like, good, how about you? And then, you know, silent for a few seconds. And then this is where it gets funny. So I'm like, do you know that that you look like yes. the guy from 13 Reasons Why. Oh, yeah, so you do, okay. <laughs> Well, you look a lot like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that a lot. You know, I get that like every day, especially since the TV show came out. So, I mean, it's cool. I now get it after watching it because, you know, the way I act, the way he looks, like, you know, it's a thing. But, yeah, I, I do get that. Oh, yeah, I used to get the lookalike thing all the time with Lily Collins. And because she has way better brows than me. So, you know, I don't see where a lot of it comes into play. Like, I, I get it. Like, I used to cosplay her as, like, this character from Mortal Instruments. Why am I still talking? Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Yeah, that's how the conversation went. This guy looked just like him though and I couldn't get over it and it's just still crazy just to think that he looks so much like the guy from 13 Reasons Why. Yeah, so I always thought the guy from 13 Reasons Why was pretty cute so I'm like, hey, you was cute too but you're probably a little bit younger than I am. I don't really go for younger guys so I'm like, 
Well, it's not seeing you. See you later. I'll probably be back tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways, Barnes & Noble was a very entertaining place yesterday. But finally, let me get to the last book in this book haul. And I'm really excited about this one because it definitely sounds like up my alley of contemporaries. Even though I don't read that many contemporaries, I do like a certain few. And this definitely sounds like something that I would really enjoy. So I'm really excited to be partnering with Disney Hyperion on this one. And this is Kill All Happies by Rachel Kahn. And it sounds like such a fun novel. And let me get into it. But before I get into it, let me show you this cover. It's really cool. So see how it's like yellow and has some cute little like emoji things on it. I think it's really cute and it wasn't until somebody pointed out to me to look at the inside flap. That's where the good book porn action gets in. Yes, look at that. So beautiful. There's, it's so cute. It gives you like a little layout of this town and I thought that, that was so clever for them to do. Cover goals. So this book is about a girl named Vic and she's about to throw the most epic graduation party anybody has ever seen. And she's gonna have it at this place called Happy's, which is this restaurant that is this dead-end town's claim to fame. She only needs to keep all of this a secret from her arch nemesis, Anne, who's a town councilwoman, so you probably want to stay away from her anyways if you want to do anything that is seen as illegal or crazy or not appropriate. Yeah. And during the night, the party is a raging success, and the councilwoman is nowhere to be seen, the alcohol is flowing, the party is thumping, but it isn't until the Happy's fans, the fans of the restaurant, storm the party, and they want to give the restaurant its send-off that they think it so rightfully deserves, and it turns out that this party goes from graduation party to Coachella on steroids really fast. So it just sounds like a lot of fun, it sounds like a very summery type novel, and I I think that it would be really fun to read so if you guys want to check it out it'll be in the description box below okay guys so I hope you enjoyed this video I really love filming it for you and I hope you enjoyed the story time let me know some of the books that you purchased this month because then I get some more recommendations okay no I do not need more books just kidding but you can still put them down there thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye